Hey everyone, if this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Emily and today I am bringing you a spooky Sunday. Typically they're spooky Saturdays, but we'll get into that in just a moment, so hang tight. It is Sunday and I really do like to keep my schedule consistent with uploading on Saturday, but my video from yesterday took me all day, let me tell you. And you might watch that video and think, girl, how did that take you all day? But I don't know, somehow it did. So I am actually going to be filming my spooky Sunday today. Well, half of my spooky Sunday. Half of this video is actually going to be from today, which is Sunday. And the other half towards the end of the video will actually be from yesterday. So you will see an outfit change and a hairstyle change and a makeup change as well. So I'm sorry if that bothers you, but the footage just got all sorts of screwed up. So I wanted to refilm this because I really love this story. Well, I don't know if love is the right word. It definitely intrigues me and I really enjoy hearing about it, but the case has to do with UFOs and maybe even being blown up by dynamite. So let's go ahead and get into that, shall we? Today's Spooky Saturday is all about Granger Taylor. Now, who is Granger Taylor, may you ask? Well, to let you know about what he has done and what happened to him, I have to give you a little bit of backstory and information about him. Granger Taylor was a 32-year-old man who unfortunately went missing on November 29th of 1980 under very, very mysterious circumstances. He lived in Duncan, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Duncan was known as a logging and fishing town and he lived with his mother and his stepfather in a secluded lake house. Although Duncan was an eighth grade dropout, he was very successful at a very young age. At the young age of 14, he was already making money and working as a welder and a mechanic. He was also able to build a single cylinder automobile. At age 17, Granger was able to actually rebuild a bulldozer that mechanics had looked at before and had left basically for scraps because they had just given up on it. In 1969, Granger was actually able to get a really old locomotive to be running again. And what's important about this locomotive is that it had been abandoned for a very long time. People had tried to work on it before and to get it up and running again, but no one could just get it to work. And Granger was able to actually work on it in an under two years, he was able to get it back and up and running and basically to its former glory. Now, this was a really big deal because no one could actually tackle this project and Granger was able to on his own and he had no experience with schooling and whatnot. He was all self-taught as far as his mechanical skills went. In 1973, the province of British Columbia actually noticed this and basically purchased the locomotive from him took the locomotive out on tour for people to see, and now it is in a museum. Not only was Granger able to get this locomotive up and running and usable again, but he was actually able to make a pretty penny off of his accomplishment. Granger also got his pilot's license and was able to rebuild a Kitty Hawk warplane, which is pretty impressive. So Granger had a lot of mechanical talent under his belt. He was described by friends as a self-taught mechanical wizard. So after years and years of rebuilding and putting back together, old items that didn't work anymore and putting his self-taught mechanical skills to good use, Granger eventually got bored as we all do with our daily tedious work life. Well, Granger started to experiment a little bit into the paranormal world. And I can totally relate because kind of dabbling into the paranormal stuff and the alien stuff kind of gives you a little bit of an escape from the everyday real world situations. Granger eventually started to build a man cave or a little hangout area in his backyard, which might not be super obscure. But the thing that was obscure about this little man cave hangout area is that he actually took old scrap metal and old parts and basically built this little UFO hangout spot in his backyard. He literally built a UFO to hang out in. It was round, it had little antennas coming out of it, and the antennas were actually satellite dishes, so he was able to receive cable and satellite or whatever they had in the 80s. I really don't know if satellite was around in the 80s. I'm a 90s girl, I'm sorry. But he had all of these working things in his little UFO. He had a stove, 
He had his TV, like I said, he had a little kitchen area, and he had a whole couch. So it was basically just a little oasis away from his daily work routine. But not long after building this UFO, Granger just got deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of the paranormal and UFO world. He ended up spending a bunch of time alone in the UFO, researching and reading about UFO encounters and how possibly these spaceships might work. Granger claims that one night when he was in bed in his UFO little hangout area, he received a message telepathically from extraterrestrial beings. He claims that they came to him. So, of course, the one thing on his mind for the past couple of months had been, how do these damn UFOs work? So he asked the extraterrestrial beings that were telepathically speaking to him and they told him that they couldn't tell him but it was something that had to do with magnets and it was something magnetic. What's your favorite hobby? Uh, magnets. Magnet. Okay, what, like making magnets, collecting magnets? Playing get, with magnets? Just magnets. Oh I'm gonna God. put snowboarding. He actually told his friend Nielsen about this encounter. Well, just two days later, he also confided in Nielsen to tell him that the aliens had actually invited him to go out on a interstellar voyage. Supposedly, this interstellar voyage was supposed to be 42 weeks long. So Granger would basically go on a little vacation with these aliens and learn about their life and learn about the UFOs and just study them. And according to Nielsen, Granger was super, super ecstatic and happy about this. I mean, honestly, you can either go one of two ways if that were to happen. You could be super terrified and scared, or you could be really excited. Well, Granger was so excited about this voyage he was supposed to be going on that he actually took his friends out a week before his disappearance in November of 1980 to basically give him a goodbye party and celebrate his life here on Earth and to celebrate him going somewhere else and being somewhere new and it was essentially a going away party for him. On November 27th, 1980, one day before Granger's disappearance, he went up to his stepdad's room and basically expressed his gratitude to him and told him how happy he was to have known him and how grateful he was for everything that he had done for him in his life. And he didn't get an opportunity to basically say goodbye to his mom because his mom had been away in Hawaii on the first vacation that I guess she had had in a very long time. So he was not really able to contact her on his last day, supposedly here on Earth. The next day on November 28th, 1980, Granger would make his very last appearance that we know of to Bob's Grill around 6 p.m. for some dinner. A lady working in the kitchen named Linda Barron was actually the last person to see him alive. Noted that he wasn't wearing a big winter coat, that he just had on a normal t-shirt and some jeans, even though it was extremely cold outside. That struck her as odd. The next day on November 29th, 1980, Granger would be reported missing to the police. Of course, his family went on a search for him, got authorities involved, and upon looking in the UFO that he had built for himself, they actually found his winter coat that had been missing from him the previous night at the restaurant, and they found a handwritten note from him. The note read, Dear Mother and Father, I have gone away to walk aboard an alien spaceship as reoccurring dreams assured a 42-month interstellar voyage to explore the vast universe, then return. I am leaving behind all of my possessions to you as I will no longer require the use of any. Please use the instructions in my will as a guide to help. Love, Granger. And he had also written a will a while ago. His family also notes that he had also crossed out the word death in his will and replaced it with the word departure. There was also a hand-drawn map on the back of the will of the nearby Mount Waterloo. And people have looked into this map and this will and the letter and so far no one has found any subliminal messaging or any hidden meanings to the map or the letter. So far it seems pretty straightforward and that Granger was just telling everyone what he believed or what possibly might have gone on. Unfortunately, his family would never really know what happened to him because Granger has been missing since that fateful day in 1980 but his family thinks that possibly he may have gone away with the alien. Although his parents are not into the supernatural or the paranormal, his dad has been quoted saying, I can hardly believe Granger's off in a spaceship. 
but if there's a flying object out there, he is the one to find it. So let's get into some theories here. So logically thinking, maybe Granger ran away. But if he were to run away, why would he throw himself a goodbye party? Why would he make such a fuss about it? Sometimes with these missing persons cases, someone will run away and not want to be found. So they will be filed as a missing person and eventually someone will find them but they did not want to be found. That's the reason why they were a missing person in the first place. So to me, it just logically doesn't make sense that he would have ran away, wanted to start a new life. Maybe even the suicide theory I can't really get on board with because he threw himself that going away party and had told so many people that he was going on this voyage and that he was so excited to go and that he would be back eventually, but he was going to be gone for a long time. And I don't know, running away just doesn't really match up for me with this story. It's definitely still a possibility. You really can't rule anything out because he is still a missing person. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure that he's been pronounced dead by now, but he might still be out there somewhere in the world or maybe out in the stars. We're never really gonna know. But the second theory that people have, of course, is that he went off on his 42 week long journey with the aliens or the extraterrestrials or whatever was contacting him. Maybe it was all true. I mean, he really did believe it was going to happen. And this guy was not just some dum-dum. He was very smart and he really understood mechanics and understood how to build things himself. Seems like he was very self-motivated and was a very smart person and a nice person, according to a lot of accounts. So maybe he really did go off on this interstellar venture and maybe he was able to learn all of the things that he wanted to. But... The likelihood of that happening is very slim. The likelihood of him going off with these actual extraterrestrial beings is very, very slim without any evidence that he actually went with them. And the final theory to me is the most shocking and the most upsetting. And that is the theory that Granger Taylor had been blown up by dynamite. Yeah, I said that right. Blown up by dynamite. This will make sense very shortly, so just hold on momentarily. According to some friends of Granger, he actually liked to carry dynamite in his giant Datsun truck that he brought everywhere with him. I guess he liked to blow up tree stumps and resell the wood and use the wood for fires and whatnot, which I guess wasn't totally out of the ordinary back in the 80s. What is out of the ordinary is that during the search for Granger over the years, Authorities actually found a spot near Mount Waterloo where they assumed someone could have blown up dynamite due to some of the residue and due to the way the area looked. They tested the soil and the surrounding areas and they actually found human bone fragments mixed in with the soil and the area. So obviously that raises some red flags when it comes to Granger's situation. He disappeared and was heading towards Mount Waterloo according to the map and then all of a sudden they find a dynamite spot where someone possibly could have been blown up and Granger was known for having the dynamite in his truck. Now what doesn't make sense to me is that where the heck did the truck go? If this dynamite is going to blow up Granger in his truck and leave behind pieces of Granger but not leave behind pieces of the truck which is obviously a lot stronger and a lot more durable and would probably withstand the blast a lot better than a human skeleton and body would. Where the heck is the truck? Why isn't there fragments of metal and pieces of the truck in there? That's what doesn't make sense to me. And if Granger wandered off somewhere and blew himself up with the dynamite, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he was known to keep the dynamite in his truck and only take it out when he was blowing up tree stumps. And there wasn't any tree stumps around this area. So this theory makes sense in a way, but there's not a whole lot of evidence to back up that this may have actually been Granger. And recently I've actually watched a video, even before I started researching this case, of one of those tech destroying channels on YouTube where people basically blow up the newest iPhone to see what happens to it for fun and views. I, I don't really get it, but I was watching someone blow up their iPhone with five sticks of dynamite, I believe it was, and the iPhone was still usable afterwards. Everything seemed a-okay other than just a very small little black hole that was in the center of the iPhone, but it didn't actually really penetrate the iPhone, so it was still usable. So if an iPhone still works after being blown up by five sticks of dynamite, then what are the chances of an entire person and an entire car being disintegrated? 
Ranger wasn't known for carrying pounds and pounds of dynamite, he would just carry a little bit with him to blow up these tree stumps. This theory makes a lot of sense, but is very, very puzzling when you actually think about it. But unfortunately, we have no idea what happened to Granger Taylor, and the man was only 32 years young. He was a very smart guy with a bright future that he achieved at a very young age, and it seemed to just be progressing forward no matter what he did. So it's very sad that he disappeared and I feel bad for his family because they seem to love him a lot and not having answers is just the worst absolute possible thing that could happen to someone. So my thoughts go out to his family and maybe one day we'll know what happened to him. Honestly, probably not. He has been gone for a very long time now, but you never know. You gotta stay hopeful. I like to think that Granger did go away with the aliens and that he learned everything there is you need to know about UFOs. I like to think that he is still out there on his voyage, up there with these little alien guys, learning more and more and more about the universe. I really think that would be the best happy ending to this story. But with that guys, that is going to be wrapping up this week's Spooky Saturday. I really hope that you enjoyed this one. I love UFO cases and I love true crime cases. I really just enjoy looking into cases like this and making these types of videos. I do hope that you consider subscribing. I am doing Spooky Saturday every single week. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below if you are into spooky stuff and paranormal stuff and also makeup. Or if you like one or the other, I have both of that here for you on this channel. I hope you are having an absolutely awesome day wherever you are, and thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye!